the wheels off. I'll leave it a bit later on when I hook that one up and test it. Leave that later on. Decide to strip this thing down. Since this flyback's designed so you can't wind your own primary on it, it's just a pain in the ass. I'm gonna pull it all off. I left those in there. Now, for those of you who don't know, I like my flybacks complete with these wires all intact. Basically, how they disconnect, this little assembly clips in half and unplugs. And in here, where the flyback uh, where you would normally slip off, you bend these tabs in here up, bend them in, and that unbites and lets go of the leads. Sometimes it can rip these out, but you can see where they actually gripped and bit into the wire. So, you can get a little bit of um, output on those as well. If this can't be clipped off, you can easily uh, undo it with a screwdriver, unclip that front half off that back half, and then get to those clips that I just showed, because they just bend back, and they, the edges of those clips hold the wires in, and when you pull them, it bites in and grabs like that. So, it's quite a way of uh, getting the flyback salvage complete and untouched. Yeah. Now I've just found something out here. This is actually a signal wire on here. Signal plus and signal minus. I think how it works, where it's on standby, everything's just ready to go. But as soon as you plug a signal into it, so through here, this circuitry will detect the signal that you put into it, then turn it, then the fly, then the, yeah, it turns everything else on. So when the flyback's on, it gets this out of standby through here. I must pick up through here and click one of these relays. Clicks that relay. And yeah, it turns them on or on, because this is like a, this is actually a, a winding, a transformer winding, what they've done there. When that's going, that'll send a voltage through there, and uh, turn the thing off standby and turn it on. So that's what that little thing's for. It's got a signal plus and signal minus. It's definitely a DC output on that. Hey, it's an LG flyback, actually. There you go. LG. Yeah, it's a bit of a proxy spot to put the fair up because I'm not designing these for ZVS drivers but eh, uh, I'll have to move that fair up core and dremel down all that plastic to get the uh, near primer to fit that. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is get another similar flyback, plug it all in, and just plug all these wires in to the CRT itself. Plug in two leads in there and the anode and see what happens. I don't expect much but eh, we'll see. Because all the rest of the stuff's on this circuit board, which powers up the rest of the circuit. But since I can't get a bloody uh, get a, get around to putting a primer in, it's so tightly packed and compact. I'm going to have to uh, do it the other way. It's probably not going to work as well as I'm going to expect, but yeah, we'll give it a try. Have a good uh, high voltage capacitor. Do you got to be careful with these? Uh, they still a hell of a charge. Anyway, let's uh, with a noise filter there. That, I'm going to get that noise filter off and keep that. Good universal noise filter. Got some diodes, some caps I can salvage off this. 470 ohm resistor, I think. 5 watt. I think it's, yeah, it could be 4700 4, ohms, I think. Got some more uh, transistors on there. Yeah. And a vertical, it must be a vertical output that. They'd be the horizontal one of the two. Yeah, put that aside, get that flyback off a bit later. We'll strip this down a bit. What I also wanted to do was uh, thump this uh, DG housing coil with my capacitor bank while it's on. Would have uh, messed the picture up big time and crushed the implosion burn inside the CRT, probably causing it to implode. So that'd be another good thing we could try if this was actually working. But yeah, I want to preserve the rest of the CRT as I got so. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just plug another flyback in this off my ZVS and see what happens. I'll get rid of this, uh, plug the other two leads in. Find another... Yeah, I should have, I think I have got another flop with both the leads still attached to it. We'll do that. Or I could just use that one, which would probably be easier. Because it's got all the leads already on there designed to fit through here, so... I think the, most of the flybacks I've got, they got these cut off, so I might as well just, uh, get this one off and try this one. that would be the And I'll just, uh, modify it back on the new primary. A bloody challenge getting this off. Damn, these LG flybacks, one of the flybacks especially, very hard to get off their circuit boards. LG tend to use these stupid clip things, and they are very difficult to get off without damaging things. And of course, nine and a half at a time, the glue holds off on one side, but when you get the other half off, it's always going to break. 
So I'll re glue that. This is a bit of good. The step will go that and it'll be uh, all fixed. But there we are, we've got that all that plastic snipped off and shaved off. I could fit a good primary around that now. Beautiful. Let's just show all the other ZVS. Let's hook it up straight to this one. That will come off there and that'll hook straight up in there. Or oh, something sticks. Oof. Um, that'll go on there. Um, oh, there, there, there. Can't there we are. Oh, we just chuck up the CIT, not its uh, chicken stick bit list. Yeah, we'll do a chicken stick the rest, eh? I'll put a chicken stick on this end and we'll just arc around here, bugger it. That'll do. There we are, fly back and power CRT like I once did. I'm using my um, 2 lithium ion, 3 18 volt, 3 ampere um, cordless drill batteries from, from a new Makita cordless drill. And this pretty damn powerful, I've got 15 amp peak on this thing and it gets pretty hot, so. I want to be careful with this primary. It's a lot of current. I get my little chicken stick out and we can start arcing. Um, I'm going to get the tripod and everything set up. Because it's going to be a bit dangerous. But it can create x-rays doing this. So I've got to be, be careful what I'm doing. So, especially with the ZVS, it's driving that fly back pretty hard. So, there's a definite risk of x-rays in this CRT. Hopefully I don't uh, melt the glass and rupture it. Even though, um, yeah, it's still quite a dangerous uh, risky as well, so even though this implosion bear is intact, but it can, can still implode. Oh, let's connect it up. Let's see what it does. There, we we'll connect it positive. It's going to charge up and be a bit risky, so yeah, be careful doing this sort of stuff. All right. Now I gotta discharge this thing somehow. Instead of charging that, didn't do much. I gotta get my discharge lead made up. There's my screwdriver. There's my discharge lead going. Um, I'm gonna put my discharge lead now. I gotta have it close and handy. Where did I put it? There it is. Oh yeah. Here we are. Discharge lead handy. Go to ground. It's supposed to be insulated, but that's good enough. Oh, right, it's discharged. Oh, that's safe. Let's do it the other way. Connect that to the ground. The arc with this end on a chicken stick. That there, that'll go there. Yeah, I think it's a bit charred up from that capacitor bank. A little charred up. That's all it does. Yeah, it cuts a spring in half, look at that! Uh, a bit out of front of the camera, we'll cut the springs off for this. Be careful, let's make the tube go um, rupture. Uh oh, disconnect! Uh oh, capacitor failure. Yeah, it's the high one voltage drawing rules is problem I've got now. Flyback's discharged. That's discharged. Let's go into the flyback actually. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just disconnect this. Connect that to earth. Now discharge. Safe to go. Alright, it's safe to proceed. I can smell it. Oh yeah. That's a pretty good ZVS job. I'm getting a pretty good result off it and the fan was virtually blowing on it. Oh, that's hot. Yeah. That green capacitor had smoke pouring out the bottom of it. 
damn it. Whew, that's a hot primary. That's a pretty powerful ZVS with those two batches on it. Damn, that's one. That's a good performance. That bloody capacitor's going. Uh, yeah, that one's gone. Everything else is staying cold. That was not so bad. It's just this green one's gotten hot. Yep, that cap's buggered. Damn it. I'll stop it just in time though, because if those caps do go open circuit, they'll uh, pop the MOSFETs. Anyway, that'd be, that's enough for that one. You can see where I'd arc to though on the CRT. Bloody capacitors failing on me. What a bastard. Burnt off some of the coating on that. Again. Discharged. Well, that was disappointing. I didn't even get anything. Didn't get the slightest output, but you can see what I did to the spring here. When it arced to that spring, it just goes pop. Snapped it. Look at that. Awesome. Let's take the stripper down, take all this uh, deflection coil off. I've got um, well, another idea for this CRT. I won't uh, vent it yet. But yeah. We'll strip this CRT down. That'll be safe for another day. Okay, CRT removed, stripped. And there we are, my new blast chamber for my capacitor bank. Put the wires in through there. Lead the metal bottom made of it. The wires will probably go through the side. And I'll put my, um, my foot in there and blast it. I might uh, cut this in half actually. I'm going to go out and cut that in half and keep this screen intact and that will go on there as a protective shield. Perfect design just to fit the case. I wonder how well these types of phosphors are clean up compared to a TV one. I might try that actually, see how well these are uh, make glass shields. These are pretty damn strong, these are uh, computer CRTs. Anyway, that's enough for now. The uh, ZVS didn't work quite well on this as I thought it would. Now they've got to upgrade the capacitors on it, because one of them's uh, gone bad. Anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, that's a good kid. That's a good kitty.